This is what we do and why we do it, baby. We roll it! Covering MMA from all over the world, this is the premier stop for all your combat sports needs. MMA Junkie Radio, the only show broadcasting live from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. The lights are on and the mics are hot. It's time to get your MMA fix, junkies. Take it away, Big John. Gorgeous George and Goes, are you ready? Junkie Nation, are you ready? Well, let's get it all. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly goes our ace co-host. To my left, it's the fight analyst, Dan Tom. Back east, producing the show, Jumbo Josh, with a quick cameo from Gabby. Not too shabby, Gabby. What's up, guys? What up? Yo, yo. Not much, man. Ready to tackle this week. Thank you. Had a nice different. weekend. Happy belated Mother's Day to anybody that I may have forgotten. I mean, I did it on Friday. I did it on Saturday. I did it all day on social media, but I'm sure I left somebody out. So happy belated Mother's Day! Hope you all had a hope you had a pleasant day, a Mother's Day, Dan and Gabby and Josh and I know Ghost did. You how do you how do you know I did? Yeah, how do you know? I was did? with you. Oh, okay. You guys brothers or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So this past weekend, Bellator 221 and UFC 237. Lots to discuss. We're gonna have a fun time here discussing the events. We'll probably lead off with the UFC main event featuring Rose Namajunas. And Jessica Andraj. But first, let me give you a little bit of information about the show. It's a two-hour show, and you can call in and participate in the show. 877-FIGHT-93. 877-344-4893. Share your thoughts, opinions about either of these cards or any of the big news that broke this past weekend. The UFC's kind of laid out what their 2019 is going to look like. Some big fight bookings were announced. And, of course... The results and everything surrounding 221, Bellator 221, excuse me, and UFC 237. Heck, if we even have some time, I wouldn't mind digging into PFL a little bit because that happened on Thursday as well. And uh, it's a promotion that's on ESPN, and I'm telling you, some good fighters there. Shoot. All right. Now, you can hit us up via Twitter, at MMA on Sirius XM. Don't just link us there by asking us a question. Go ahead and hit that follow button. That way we can, uh, you can, you can. Uh, interact with all of the different hosts from all of the different shows. Again, at MMA on Sirius XM. All right, guys. We have a new world champion in the strawweight division. Jessica Andrade defeated Rose Namajunas in round two of their fight out in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, UFC 237 main event. And if you had watched round one and then maybe went to the restroom and tried to get greedy by grabbing a beer... (laughs) <laughs> and kind of missed out a little bit about how the fight ended. You would think I'm crazy because Rose Namajunas was putting on a clinic in those first five minutes before ultimately she got slammed, man, uh, into unconsciousness. And there went her title. Congratulations to Jessica Andrade. I thought she was dominating the fight. I really didn't see much that was left for Jessica because she was looked like she was tiring out a little bit. She was starting to get lumped up, bleeding. You thought she was tiring? I thought she was tiring a little bit. I thought she was um, frustrated, but I don't know if she was tiring. But but it wasn't the type of tiring where you would say uh, that person wasn't in good condition. Right. I think she was just trying so many things. Yeah, and she they, was and flustered, they weren't working man. That maybe flustered is a better word than. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that slam was brutal. And I, I was just happy that she was healthy afterwards because the way she fell yeah, no on doubt. her neck and yeah. the way her feet started to twitch a little bit, it was like, oh, my God, I hope nothing really happened to her to her neck or her spine or something. So thankful that she's okay. Yeah, they had her up pretty quickly. Uh, when they came back, you know, and they wanted to award the belt, you could already see that Rose was basically clearing the cobwebs and coming back too. So very, very happy to see that. Rose has already posted on social media and already done a post-conference. So anyway, what do you think, Dan? It was an awesome fight. Uh, before I get in the fight, though, this is an awesome shirt too, George. I love love those Thank Hawaiian shorts. I was going to say the really same really thing. It, it honestly, really? Are no, you guys no pumping irony. me? No, or you really say, like it? I was no, going to say I no felt irony. like a. No, I, I felt like a. Um, Party like, like the movie Point Break. I feel like this would have been in. Uh, like Angelo? Pappas's, yeah, Angelo Pappas's <laughs> closet, and I just hey, can I borrow that? Hey, Utah, get me two. 
Give me two. <laughs> two subs. <laughs> well, I was going to. Meatball subs. They got the best. Yeah. The I best. said it. I was thinking it when you were pulling it out. Yeah. But my thought process was, well, let me see how it looks <laughs> first. But it looked kind of cool from afar. Trying and, to bring yeah. in the summer a little bit. I like it. <laughs> but, Thank you. But, but speaking of the main event, though, guys, it, it was uh, it was great. You know, I, I picked Andraj, but I, I think we saw everything kind of me, all, all the you know anal- analysts, pundits, uh, me- media people, if you will, seeing what Rose would have to do in order for her to get the win. She was mm-hmm. showing those things, how to do those things. Uh, and kind of like I said in my breakdown, it's not that I don't think she could win. She just really has to fight like the, the proverbial perfect fight. And I would argue for that first seven minutes, she fought a pretty m- close to a perfect fight. Now, uh, toward the end of toward the Way end, better than she's ever looked. Exactly. Wow. Now, second round, Andrade was finally adjusting. I believe she was hitting some leg kicks and starting to get, get some hooks, landing more hooks. Uh, True. Uh, and then, of course, came she the... She got sl- Rose the retreat. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, came the slam, which we've seen her do that a bunch of times before. And she can get it from positions you're not supposed to. I believe even in Dominic Cruz in the commentaries, like, oh, she's not going to get this like a second mm-hmm. before. And that's no knock on Dominic. It's just on Andrade, she gets those things where you're not supposed to. Now, I, like you guys, my first thought was, man, I hope she's okay. Whenever you see stuff on the neck like that, you know. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I, I don't see what the uh, uproar is. And I, I, I don't know how much you guys want to get into that or how much you saw online. But on Twitter, I saw a decent amount, which was strange, uh, especially when you compare it to the, rea- the reaction from another fight in the, the card in the co-main event. But it was strange because... Technically, Andrade was right. Anytime, by the way, guys, especially those of you, uh, you know, MMA and, and whatnot in there, anytime someone locks up that double wrist lock, Kimura, figure four grip, whatever you want to call it, standing, and you can get around to their back, you always slam to the same side as the Kimura. Go watch. We were all at the fight with UFC 125. I think Rory McDonald, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz kept going for that figure four. What did Rory do? He kept, he kept tossing him in the air, but he was slamming him to the Kimura side. Andrade did a textbook, and something that we were talking about on the show, and I know me and George were talking about Friday after the show. Andrade is one of the most sweetest uh, when you're interviewing her. Like, you don't have to speak Portuguese to, like, kind of get that demeanor. Uh, we saw how she was being toward Rose during fight week, giving her the Rose. It wasn't anything malicious, guys. She did something textbook. It's um, it, 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 it's up to the fighter how they fall. It's up to the fighter if they want to stay committed to that submission. Or, right. or not, you know. Remember, remember Rampage Machida. Machida gets the triangle, and you could tell Machida had the Ricardo Arona flashbacks because when Rampage goes up to slam, what did Machida do? He's like, okay, I'm letting go of this triangle. Right, Look. disengage. Yeah. So I just wanted to add that in there. But. Right. Yeah. A few people hit up John McCarthy and Mark response. Goddard, and they both gave that type of yeah, response. Great response. What? A few of the factors that made it a legal slam versus a pile driver was for one, there has to be an arc, not twelve to six. And two, Rose, by having, you know, for, uh, forward thinking in, into, okay, how, how do I want to land? Because you remember in the first round, she slammed her as well. Mm-hmm. And Rose almost had the advantage right away on the ground. Yeah. And I thought of you, Dan. Actually, when we were doing the sportscaster, I told Ghost, remember what Dan says if she takes the back? Oh, and then Jessica had already I was thinking about that too. prevented <laughs> that from happening. But Rose looked like she was really, really close to taking yeah, the back. Yeah. And all that started because of uh, her forward thinking, you know. I mean, she probably knew she was going to go for a ride a couple times because everyone that fights Jessica Andrade right. does. But in the one I'm talking about in round two, um, by locking up the Kimura, th- that already made it so that the, I guess, even the arc didn't matter. Because uh, like, like John explained, here. she's free to, to, uh, to disengage. This is from Big John. This, okay. is what, this is what he tweeted. He said, when Rose goes for the armbar, she has a choice to either let go of the armbar or try and hold on to it and go for the ride that Andrade is, Andrade is about to put her on. There is no illegal slam when a submission is being attempted. It does not matter how she brings her down. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, I, I wouldn't just completely crap on anyone that throws it out there unless they're running to Twitter and just – having some sort of a, of a meltdown. But if people are asking and they just don't know, dude, I can tell you right now, I'm raising my hand as high as I can. I don't know every rule, honestly. And I get surprised at every couple pay- pay-per-views when either somebody tells me something that I already knew and I go, oh, how did I forget? Or I just literally didn't know a certain factor. You know what sucks about that? And I, I completely concur. That was a great read and reference. But in reference to that reference where there's no submission being attempted, guys, man, how does a guy like Jared, not to pick on him, but Jared Brooks feel work? He, he got spiked on his head, and there was no submission, but he did the spiking himself. Yeah. You know, and you saw him get up, and he kind of got up in that similar way to the one time where we did see spiking called in the UFC. Maybe there's more than one, guys, but uh, was it Patrick Cote, Alan Belcher? Was mm. that one of them, one of the times? Time. And, and, and again, oh, Nate Quar- Marquardt did well, it. Maybe it was way, Marquardt. Yeah. Maybe it was Marquardt, uh, Cote. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but so, so it was middleweights for sure of that era. 
And, yeah. and yeah, you see them, they spike and they kind of get up dazed, and the guy goes to follow up. It, and the it didn't end the calls. fight, but I think there may have been a 10 8. I forget. I'd have to brush up on that. It one, was. It was a foul. It was a 10 8. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Mm, okay. And it may have been Okami, or I don't remember. But look, um, it was a couple things. For one, congrats to Jessica Andrade. Even though she was flustered, frustrated, or whatever, she kept it together. And like Dan said, she did start to have a better round two than round one. Because round one, she got lit up. I'm telling you, it looked like Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa. Um, Rose would just go, bah, like a jab or a one-two. And it, it was even snapping her head back. You know what I mean? Like she wasn't even getting close. Great like, reference there. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then her footwork. And then there was times when Jessica actually kind of like pinned her. And Rose would slip out and come right back to the middle. It was literally – it was a clinic that she was putting on. And I thought, wow, like usually by the third or fourth minute, Jessica's done something, whether it's a barrage of punches, those wild hooks that she throws, a slam. She has a moment. And literally she went like five and a half, six minutes before she even had a moment. Um, but all it took was that one slam, and that was it. I would have wanted to see the fight play out a little bit more, and if it ended like that in round four or five, okay. But I really wanted to see – what else Jessica would bring to the table other than just that one slam? Because if she didn't do anything quickly, that eye, you know, it was it was right above her left eye. Mm. It was a it was a gash that they addressed and they did pretty good. So it's not like there was blood trickling in or anything. But still, if it gets bigger, the doctor will come in and give a strong opinion on whether it should be stopped or not. Whereas mm -hmm. when it's below the eye, you're uh, way more out of the woods. But regardless, another thing she did was save the card in terms of. Brazil. Brazil was getting waxed. Oh, yeah. You know, a yeah, lot of those legends it just was not their night. And I know some fights had Brazil versus Brazil. I'm not talking about those, but literally an Australian, we'll get to that, beat Aldo. An American beat Little Nog. An American beat Anderson Silva. Uh, uh, an Argentinian beat Thiago Alves. <laughs> and those are big names in the sport. I, 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 I tweeted that it was a hashtag no country for old men was the theme. Of that yeah. card, because even the non-Brazilians, it was BJ Penn got beat by Clay Guida, and even though he wasn't Brazilian, that was kind of a crazy. Was that the first time we've? I know the Brazilians went crazy and they popped for Rousey, both at weigh-ins and the walk-in, right, guys? Mm -hmm. But was that the first time that the Brazilian crowd was actually chanting? Because so, they were actually chanting BJ. BJ. And I've never BJ. heard that chant uh, name of anybody not. Yeah, Brazilian that was before. cool. Was that the first time in history that that's been? Well, done? I, I don't know in history of Brazil, but uh, they don't do it too often for outsiders. But BJ transcends nationality or anything. That's just. He's a, a legend, you know what I mean? So I think they just wanted wow, to give yeah. him that type of love. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he deserved it. And uh, we'll talk about that fight because, boy, I was happy to see BJ compete. Usually <laughs> in the last couple fights that hasn't been happening. All right, let me introduce our co-host for the day, Ali Abdelaziz, manager to many of the big stars out there. Let me just start off with world champions alone. He's got Henry Cejudo, the flyweight champion in the UFC. He's got Habib Nurmagomedov, the light, uh, lightweight champion in the UFC. He's got Kamaru Usman, the welterweight champion in the UFC. Many guys and gals that are going to be competing for belts or just competing for belts. And then he's got the unique situation where in the Bantamweight division, unless there's a draw, I guess, he's going to have that champion as well. Either Henry Cejudo, a champ champ, or Marlon Marais. Welcome, Ali. How you doing? What's up, guys? I'm very sorry. I was training and, and uh, actually I come here with an Uber because my I don't have my car and it was delayed and I want to apologize. Oh, no worries. Oh, no worries. All right. It's good to have you here, man. We're discussing Rose. Nama Yunus and Jessica Andraj, and we're, uh, we're going to keep going through the card, but you want to offer some thoughts on what you think of that fight? Uh, I think Rose looked phenomenal. Yeah. I think she had a really good game plan. She just made a really technical mistake. She held down this Tamora, Kamora grip. It worked out for her the first time, and uh, she said the second time, I think <coughs> Jessica Andraj did a good, you know, she, she kind of, like, she got a little bit smart with it, Rose hold down to the Kamora didn't let go and uh, it's kind of she just capitalized on a mistake and, mm -hmm. and it's okay I would like to see the rematch though. I, I would really do mm -hmm. I really do but I think Rose looked like a complete new Rose like her jab was great movement take down defense you know but I think Kamora grip is a little bit old school you mm -hmm. know people doesn't use Kamora grip they use Kamora grip and come back with elbows you know uh, you know but Kamora grip to get picked up like that and slammed on your head is a, it's a little mistake. Every fighter makes mistakes. She's young. She's going to grow. Uh, my opinion, she's still one, you know, she's one of the best ever to do it at the, pen, uh, the 115 division. Mm -hmm. you, you see her back. You see her back. Is my reputation okay with everyone here? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm the only one who witnessed this, but another one of your predictions, 
because it was only you and I in the room. Oh. You told me she was going to be champ. Who? Jessica Andraj, one day. Yeah. You go, I, one day she's going to be a champ. But this is like three years ago or something like that. Yeah, I, because Jessica, you know, she's a physical specimen. You know, she's she's not just a regular ordinary girl. She's She got power. She got, you know, she, she, she got, she, she only fights one way, right? She fights word for, and a female, female, normally female, they do not put this kind of pressure on you. Cyborg did it out, you know, she's kind of the same fighter, mm -hmm. but Jessica Andrade is like a complete package. She has good wrestling, she has good jujitsu, she has good endorsement, she doesn't get tired, she can fight you for 10 rounds. One, one punch power, too. She, she she have, yeah, and she a lot have, of strawweights don't have that. You don't see women knocking people out with one punch. She is. You see this girl, Vivian Arujo, she was the first fight of the night. The one that beat Talita Bernardo. She, that was she's a 115 pounder. She took this fight on four days' notice. And she walked around at 131. She waited in, and she beat the top 15. But for a long time, I knew about her. Vesanti Luca told me, you know, he's fighting this weekend. He told me about her, and everybody raved. Osman told me about her. They said she's, she's a future champ, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, she Did was she train with them in Florida? No, she trained in Brazil, in Brasilia. Oh. But she probably got to move to Florida now and train, you know. I'm surprised she didn't get a performance of the night, mm -hmm. you know. But I think Rose is amazing. She, she will come back. I think... You can see her come back, and she can beat. Uh, she can beat Jessica. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see her coming back. She beat Jessica, and we we'll have a third fight. You know, be a trilogy. I can see that happening. All right. Well, we definitely want to tackle uh, Rose Nama Yunus. The topic of Rose Nama Yunus will be part of our daily debate. So we'll circle back to that in just a second. But let's keep going through the. I card remember here. too. Rose have one of the probably, in my opinion, one of the best coaches ever, Trevor Whitman. Yeah. And Trevor Whitman, he doesn't even train too many people here in Justin Gaethje and he is a wizard man like he's I'm so amazing and I'm sure she's gonna become back a champ I think she'll be champ again my mm -hmm. opinion yeah well there's thoughts of her saying you know this might be it but uh, I, I think it's too soon for that I'd like for her to just take some time off then make the decision you know it's very an emotional state that a fighter's in but one thing I did note was her saying the pressure's off so this fight just I mean sorry this fight game her being a world champion apparently was not not a fun time for her like like most champs the way they uh she, 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 embrace she, it she, she want to live in the farm man she she she's so she's not in it to go to the fight and take pictures and she's a unique girl but but this weight division gonna have problem i think uh tatiana soros is a big problem for this weight division i think she's problem i think she's the she's the girl to beat actually mm -hmm. you know i i think she's gonna be a problem i think the one 15 division i think like mick manor really did a good job like bringing girls in like it's it's a lot of movement in the girls division right now right mm -hmm. and i think the girls division never been this excited ever now is is good mm -hmm. all right now let's move on to uh, another fight and this is perfect timing here with your arrival ali mm -hmm. uh alexander Volk volkanovsky defeated jose aldo unanimous decision 230 27s and a 29 28 and uh you know, I, I, I was I was disappointed in the fight. I, I don't know. Two big names like that, I thought I was going to see more fireworks. And the reason I was a little disappointed, and I realized not every fight can be perfect from every fighter. But that card, to me, when I looked at it, like if you go, hey, that's the card, and I looked at it, one my eyes gravitated to one fight. It was mm -hmm. Volkanovski and Aldo. And I just thought I was going to see more, like, fireworks. You know what I mean? And look, Volkanovski got the job done. I thought both guys could have done more. I thought both guys put themselves in a situation where it could have got scary because I thought it was 1-1 going into the third. One judge had it that way, but the other two didn't. Yeah, apparently, Aldo was drawing dead. But I felt like Aldo should have been doing a little bit more knowing that he was the, he had the round that was closer to not being his versus Volkanovski clearly had round two. And so I wanted to see more out of Aldo. Uh, Volkanovski won. And my tie into Ali is... Uh, Ali represents Frankie Edgar as well, and so this fight apparently had, you know, was being watched, uh, and, and so Volkanovski is obviously pleading his case. Ali, I know you feel different, but first of all, what do you guys think about the fight, and then what do you guys think is next for each guy? First of all, I think Volkanovski is a, is a really good fighter. Uh, seemed like a really great guy. You know, listen, I, you know, he won six in a row, and he's doing a great job. And listen, at the end of the day. I can say whatever I want. He can say whatever he wants. The media can say whatever he wants. Everybody can plead that case, right? But 
I'm not going to sit here and talk anything bad about Vatnowski because I think he's amazing. You know, I think he's a really good fighter. I think he can be a champion too, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, Frank is a legend, did a lot for the sport. Uh, he got passed over so many times, Connors and Chad Mendes and all that. But at the end of the day, like, <clears throat> the UFC got to make this decision, you know. doesn't matter what anybody said. At the end of the day, they have a business turn. I'm just going to sit back, let them do their job, you know. But I can't say he and said he doesn't deserve it. Do you feel confident that the UFC will side with Edgar versus Volkanovski, or do you feel a little, some nerves that maybe Volkanovski won the shot on Saturday? I, I, Listen, I, I love Frankie Edgar, right? But it's just, the UFC is going to do what they need to do. That's, that's about it. You know, mm -hmm. I can't really speak about it, talk about it. Let them let let do what they need to do. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I can't put a guy up, I can't put down. Of course, I'm riding with Frankie Edgar. But at the end of the day, I think Van Farnowski is a great fighter. You know? you know, they have a show in Australia probably in in October or September, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure he want to fight on there. October 6th, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I, I'm not in a position to kind of play it any case because I don't want to disrespect any other man who really work really hard to get there. This is about it. What do you think, Guz? I think Frankie Edgar deserves it, but I honestly don't see it as being a bad thing for Volkanovski. I think one more fight would make him even better. You're right. I think there were moments in that fight. I mean, the guy's fighting in Brazil. He's fighting Jose Aldo. It's a tough matchup, you mm -hmm. know. But there were a, a few points there where it just seemed like he still has a little bit of room to improve. And I think one more fight would probably do that. And why not? I mean, if you're looking from his perspective, you got those two guys fighting. You know, you match up Holloway and, and, uh, and Frankie. Why not make them fight? And then you come up and, and, and fight after that. I think one more fight would actually help him. Dan? I don't disagree that another fight would help him, but uh, I do think he's done enough to earn it. However, how do you disagree that, like, Frankie Edgar, it, you know, is not going to get a shot, especially his history at that division? I know people like to say, well, he's got a bunch of title shots. That's true, but since then, he's also had a lot of shots promised to him, arguably earned. Mm -hmm. So if they do go ahead and, and, and go ahead and make Frankie the next shot, I think Volkanovski should uh, just not fight and kind of keep his spot. I think he's done enough to earn it, and like Ghost said, he can use that time to kind of get better himself. Somebody keep calling me, like, Kind of yeah, yeah, you can take that. Yeah. All right. So what I was gonna say was that was a very important call. What was it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what I was gonna say was this. I felt like you know I love these win streaks, and I wish Ali could hear, but um, Volkanovski certainly did enough to earn a shot. Right. When you win six in a row or seven in a row, I mean, what more you ask, right? What more does it take? Especially since along the way he beat the ranked fighters. Because you can win five or six in a row, but if you haven't even touched fifteen or ten. We were like, well, how would you do against those guys? Because when a guy's like three and two, but all he fights is top five, top six guys, you reach a certain point, and you're not going to fight the number 20 guy. So you're going to win, you're going to lose. But anyway, what I, what I really felt was if Frankie hadn't fought in a while, I know there was an injury there, but it must be for a reason. We know we have to get Max healthy because he just had a war with Dustin Poirier. But I thought this guy must have the shot already. The onus is on Volkanovski. If Mol Volkanovski can be spectacular at UFC 237, then maybe he overtakes Frankie Edgar. But I didn't think he was spectacular at UFC 237. But now that said, I know all those a tough puzzle to figure out. I know he's in Brazil and everything. But that's the fight game, and especially the featherweight division that's so stacked with so many contenders left and right. You, it's that last impression you make. You know what I mean? And th so. Uh, that's why I was thinking, hmm. I'm, I'll make a small point, right? Sure. Frankie Edgar showed us so much of great times and great moments and great fights, you know, and uh, great memories, right? When he stepped up, when, when, uh, when, uh, when Max got hurt, the UFC come to him, said, hey, fight Ortega, not for a title. He said, let's go, right? When Ortega got hurt and they asked to fight somebody else for an intro belt, he said, no, right? As a company, as Dana White or Sean or... Hunter or make whatever who make the decision, they're gonna look at this. These guys put almost six hours in octagon, and he gave up a title shot to save a car for me. How he don't give my title shot, right? Mm -hmm. They say, you know what? Thank you, Frankie Edgar, for all the stuff he did for us. But at the end of the day, too, he's still in the top three. <laughs> you know, he's still in the top three. He went out there four we uh, five weeks later and fought Cubs once and beat him. You know. Max, I think I heard two times, or one time, I don't remember. Max is still, my opinion, everybody said Aldo's the greatest featherweight of all the time. No, it's, it's Max. It's Max Holloway. He is. I love Aldo. I think he's amazing. 
You know, he's between him and Max. It's kind of going up to up, right? But Valnowski, I'm from Australia. You know, I just beat one of the greatest of all the time. He did not look impressive. But it's hard to look impressive against Aldo, right? Whoever looked impressive against Aldo instead of Connor was a lucky punch, right? He was, a, you know, not a lucky punch, whatever, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, like, you have to look if who people will buy pay-per-view, Max or Frank Edgar or Valnowski or Max Holloway, right? Like, you see certain media members out there, you know, <coughs> keep lobbying for other people and stuff like that, but they're doing this because I have beef with them. This is the reality. You know guys who I'm talking about, right? Uh, you know, that's okay. But and more they talk, more is going to backfire on the other guy. And if you are a professional fighter, <laughs> this one specific guy, more he lobbying for you, believe it, <laughs> the UFC will go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> believe me. Really? Hell yeah. Uh. You know, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of power play in this game right now, but at the end of the day. All right, so. Listen, listen. Yeah. I think the UFC sometime. Hey, Habib got passed away from by Conor. Remember, Habib was on t nine fight winning streak, twenty five and zero. Frankie got passed away by Chad Mendes. You know, listen, it happened. You know, but if I was Varnowski, I'm gonna say, you know what? You go ahead, fight Frankie and Max. You can fight, and I'm gonna fight the winner. Come, come fight me in Australia. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a great kid, man. I, I, I don't know him, but I listened to his interview. I think I don't think he need to fight for what he doesn't need to fight. He needs to sit. Mm -hmm. You know right. he been fighting regularly, but I can't say though. Oh, this talk bad about him because he's a great fighter. All right, let's take a break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. We'll be right back. We got to do our daily debate, and then we'll keep talking about UFC 237, which took place this past weekend. And at the top of the bill, Jessica Andrade defeated Rose Namajunas. So you have a new strawweight champion, Jessica Andrade. And our co-host for the day is Ali Abdel Aziz, manager of the stars. All right, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back.
thing. Everybody knows it's duck season. Rabbit season. Duck season. Rabbit season. Whether it's food. Less filling. Tastes great. Less filling. Tastes great. Gambling. Always bet on black. I like red. Black. Red. Black. Red. Black, dummy. Or even social media. Instagram. Snapchat. Instagram. Snapchat. The same applies to the biggest stories in MMA. Time for MMA Junkie Radio's Daily Debate. Today's Daily Debate question for at MMA Junkie Radio. If Reno, uh, excuse me, if Rose Namajunas does decide to continue fighting, does she deserve an immediate rematch with Jessica Andrade? Yes or no? But please expand, Dan. You know, it deserve is a funny word in MMA. Um, but that is the question, though, right, guys? Again, we always go off the question, off the wording. We're not purposely trying to trick you or anything, but we got to do our best to do that. So I will actually say yes, uh, she does deserve it. If, obviously, the big caveat, if she wants to continue. And I'll add a little bit more color uh, to that caveat. Um, even though I'm saying if she wants to continue, I'm, I'm still not sure that would be enough, guys, to, to, to be honest. I feel like Rose has gotten a, gotten a couple pushes, and if she does still want to keep going, there, there are other hey contenders guys. in the wings like Tatiana Suarez. <laughs> Dan Oye just said, replied, he said, MMA junkie must be in her in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Why is that? coming. He's joking. For guests. Oh, for guests? <laughs> right. Shouts to Dana. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, speaking of Dana, I'm not sure if Dana and the USC brass will give it to her, but does she deserve it? Yes. I, I don't know if she's going to get it, though. Okay. Uh, so, yes was your answer. Yes all is right. the answer. Listen. Uh, all right, Ali, Ali, do you think she deserves, if she decides to continue fighting, does she deserve an immediate rematch with Jessica Andrade? Of course she deserves it. But I, if I was, you know, her management, whatever, I'm looking out for Rose, I would talk to Rose. I said, hey, I want to talk with you. Look, you need to clear up your mind. You know what I'm saying? It, it's up to Rose. It's, 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 it's Rose, you have to understand, as a woman went to Brazil to fight in this hostile territory, she didn't have to do that. She did that, right? It's nobody all nothing in this business, right? It's everything is earned, right? She looked dominant in the first round. She made an error, make a mistake, she lost, right? If I was the UFC, I will make an immediate rematch. But I cannot wait too long because you have Tatiana Soros coming up. You have, you know, Claudia climbing her way up. You have, you have so many people coming up. I will do it right away, right? Mm-hmm. But I think Rose, uh, mentally, she has to be ready for that. You understand? Like, I, I, if, if you do a rematch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose Rose to win. I will choose Rose to win. You understand? Jessica Entourage is amazing, you know? And she'll be a great champion. But Rose also be a great champion, mm-hmm. you know? They're two great ladies, but like I said, Tatiana Rose is a problem. She's going to come for this girl too, like, you know? If I was Rose, I'll clear up my mind. I'll come. She have a great manager, my friend Brian Butler. Come talk with Dana White. Said, hey, sit down. I want a rematch right away. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. How about you, guys? Yeah, I'm down. Pretty much down for that plan. I think she absolutely deserves it, but this is the wrong sport to be competing in if your head's not there, right? And she was talking about how stressful everything was and all that. You ask sometimes fighters ask like why people ask why do fighters stick around too long? I think it's that fear. Once it goes away, you start to miss it. And I think maybe she needs that for a little bit. Just get away for a while and start to love it again. Because maybe she'll miss it. And if she doesn't miss it, then it means she shouldn't be there, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say take some time off, come back, and get your title. Because I watch, I just watched the fight again. She was winning a lot of that fight. And I think she could come back and maybe even set up a trilogy. Okay. So it says if she decides to continue fighting, does she deserve an immediate rematch? So if she says, all right, my head's in the game and I want to continue fighting, then I would just say, look, are you, do you plan on fighting soon? And do you plan on fighting frequently? Because she also took a whole year off, and I don't like it when divisions are held up, especially when there's fighters like Ansaroff, Suarez, Gadelia, you know, Esparza. They're all chasing the champ. They all want to be a champion. Right. You know why she lost? So, excuse me. You know why she lost? Rose. Yeah. She, she got Dana, No, she let Dana White pick up her song. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. She said that. <laughs> don't let Dana White pick up your song. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying. Look, I, I want a champion to be ready to defend and. Uh, she didn't have a long reign, you know. She won the title and then defended against Joanna, and that's it. So, you know, what are the, some of the things you look at for a, a champion that should uh, get an immediate rematch? Like people are pleading that Stephen Miocic defended the belt three times, and in those defenses, he actually like knocked out his opponent. I mean, they were great performances. So, th- those that were campaigning for Miocic yeah. to get an immediate rematch, they had a case. You know, Rose defended once, and now she lost, and her last two wins had been against the same opponent. There was Uh, a lull you know where she just didn't defend so again i would sit down and say look are you ready to fight and if so okay because you were winning that fight 
we respect you for going to Brazil, but then, you know, tell me that you're also going to be an active fighter and you got the rematch. She says, anything, any type of a hesitancy, then I just roll with the winner of answer off in Suarez, honestly. Yeah. And then say, Rose, here's another fight for you, whatever it might be. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm actually leaning um, more towards no, only based on her her last few years of but, but activity but or lack of. You're not against it because everybody loves Rose. Right. If they give it to her, you're like, okay. She's not going to be like, no, why you give it to Rose? Everybody loves Rose. Right? Yeah. Remember, she beat Joanna two times in a very dominant fashion. Yeah. We have short memories here. But it's, you know, we we'll move on from the Rose. And what's next? Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, that, the, the way the voting came in was 77% said yes. 23% said no. 1,400 votes came in. There you have it. There's today's daily debate. All right. Continuing. Anderson Silva and Jared Cannonier. Yet another fight where a Brazilian legend uh, came up short in Brazil. And uh, it surprised me a little bit because it surprised me more that the Brazilians weren't doing good that night. I thought, I didn't think it would go over four. We're talking about Alves, Nogueira, Aldo, and, and Silva. But uh, sure enough, that's the way uh, it, wa it wound up. Anyway, Jared Cannonier kicked. He used his right leg to kick uh, Anderson Silva's right leg. Anderson Silva's knee buckled. We're hearing that in training he may have had these problems. Cannonier saying, no, it was the kick. Anyway, Herb Dean in a... Waved the fight off, and that was that. What would you guys think of that result? It's a kick that, that he landed multiple times in that fight. You know, it sucks that it goes down that way, especially with a legend in Brazil. But this, you know, Ali said it, this is a business. And I don't know, a lot of people want Anderson Silva to just walk away because he's not as competitive as he was in other fights. <coughs> but at some point, I think the UFC is going to look at, that's probably a very big paycheck that they're handing out. And I don't know that they want to be handing it out for him just to fight any random guy if he's not going to be... Uh, fighting for a title. Good point. Listen, in the UFC, there's no layup. There's no easy fight. And I'm telling you something. You can say whatever you want about Dana White and all those guys, but there's it's, it's no layups. It's, it's no. It's, when you come to the UFC, you have to be ready to fight the best in the world, right? If I'm paying Anderson Silva all this money, it's up to him to get ready to fight. He chooses to fight, right? BJ Penn too. I love BJ, but he ready to fight. You know? But we're not in any position I, I, honestly, the media, and you guys might not like this, you cannot tell Anderson Silva you're too old to fight because he just went to decision with the current champ. You know what I'm saying? It's not in our positions to tell him not to fight. I respect Anderson Silva. I think he's a great fighter. I, you know, But he has to compete with these young guys. This is old versus young. Old line versus young line, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, you know, Anderson Silva by now should have many millions in the bank, and and he doesn't need to fight. But I don't know what's his financial situation. Maybe he's passionate. He says he still wants to finish out his contract. Yeah. It sounds like there's more fights it's coming. It seems like he want to make money, and it's all right. You can't blame the man to make money, you know. Um, I don't think he is considered one of the greats, to be honest with you. I don't think he's the GOAT because his situation... But he's, he's, he's one of the best middleweight we've ever seen. Right? But I don't think he's one of the greatest because the situation surrounded him. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of respect. I enjoy watching him. I will watch him again. Jared Carnier, we all kind of do him unjust because he beat David Branch, who's one of my guys. He beat Anderson Silva. Like, give this guy some respect. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Dan Tom? Yeah, this was Anderson Silva business. He's still this in it. This was, yeah. Um, I mean, am I still in it? Well, that's a that's a feels like a whole other question. Um, I I I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of where he's at, uh, and, and whatnot. He looked kind of vibrant for this one, and and I dare say healthier. You don't know. That's not something you can measure by looking at somebody. But just you know, his spirit, his demeanor, even his body shape for for this stage and advancement of his career. Uh, Cannonier, you got to give him credit, though. Like Ali said, you know, he came in there with a game plan. He told the commentators pre-fight. He spoke about it in interviews, aiming for that leg. Um, and it's just one of those things. Uh, he, he worked at it, and, and, and it hurt him. And if you look at it, it says TKO leg injury. And that, that, even the official results not giving uh, Cannonier credit because, you know, you look back on the record, it's going to be like, oh, well, Silva must have injured his leg again, and it was the same leg. Mm -hmm. And that is true. It was the same leg. No, but, but this is an MC spot. MCL. It's, it's inside the knee. It's not the bones. It was the Exactly, knee. yeah. It was a different, that's what I'm saying. It was a different it's, spot. It's, yes, it was a different it's, spot. It's a clip. And, and guys, guys, to go in Brazil and fight Anderson Silva, and you got you got hundred million people booing you, and you go on there and and hold it together. You gotta get respect. Anderson Silva gave respect. Yep. The media have yeah. to give him respect. 
The fan was not having it. No, no. <laughs> give him yeah. respect, but it's I think it was him cupping his ear with his hand. That, but but that you know what? It's okay. Guess what? He he's emotional. He just fought. I know. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, martial art is about respect, right? Mm -hmm. Brazilian fan is very rough and they're very loyal. I love him. Uh, but when you go into Brazil, you're gonna die. They say. Yeah. You have so to he be had ready. every right to go. What? Am, what? What's gonna happen again? Right. They're what about? Yep. About to I be mean, ready. And, and, and we see that. You know, like we see, you know, we see cage grabs uh, all all the time. Let's just say. But I forget what match it was. It was on the main card. We saw the American cage grab from the Brazilian, and the crowd. You see the people in the back and, and behind the cage. Go, look! Look! Pointing. You know, just just flipping out, and, and it's kind of funny. You know, whereas mm -hmm. like even Aldo Volkanovski, when Volkanovski landed on Aldo clean. The crowd no sold it. They didn't say nothing. You know, it's, it's really tricky. It's a different, I, like Ali said, it's a different I, environment over there, man. I, I, don't, I don't think about um, he not only clean on Aldo, man. It, it was it wasn't a very good fight. He didn't hurt him, but honestly, I, mean, just I was looking forward for a great fight. I'm not taking anything away from them. Right. Aldo looks off, but he played it safe. You know what I'm saying? I was honestly, I didn't, I thought it was gonna be a finish. You right, know, right. but you know, they showed they both veteran, they both crafty. Valnowski, he, he did what he had to do to win. He beat the legend. Nobody. You know, listen, nobody beat Aldo. So many people, few people beat Aldo. Yeah. He's, he's going to go on the list. Yep. Let me ask you guys a question. Can you guys see fighters like Jose Aldo and Anderson Silva ever fighting outside of the UFC? Anderson Silva. Because you, you look, at, look at guys like Vitor Belfort. He's with one championship. Tito Anderson. Ortiz Nothing decided would with shock me at this point. But, um, Anderson. Anderson would? Outside yeah. the UFC, you think so? Yeah. Machida, you know, they're managed by the same guys. He went and was fight outside. You know, this guy's going to go with the money, huh? and I, you can't blame him. It's all right. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's okay. But at the end of the day, like, listen, did you guys watch BFL last weekend on ESPN, right? How great was that? It was such a great show. Honestly, like, I go to every fight. It's like so much anxiety. The only show I really go and enjoy is BFL. I really love the show. Like, as a fan, I sit down, and I really have so much fun, you know. Mm -hmm. It's everybody's. Is involved. You got like guys like, you know, this guy's fighting for one million dollars. I know guys been in the UFC for ten years or, or Bellator. They haven't made a million dollars yet. And I'm not saying the UFC is bad or Bellator is bad. Everybody have different dreams, right? Some guys said I want to be in the UFC, and I said you will make more money in BFL. No, nope. but if I was a fighter, I'm, I want to become a millionaire. You know, screw all that. Do like, you think Anderson would go to PFL? No. Before he, Bellator. If he left the UFC, no, it's, he can't. He can't fight in this format. It's it's a, it's a very to become a champion in PFL, is very very hard. Okay. There's a lot of element involved, injury involved. But the whole thing is, you know what I love about BFL? It's no politics. <laughs> you fight your two fight, point detect everything. Yeah. It's on ESPN. They have the same platforms. ESPN. You, you're dealing with class act, right? The owner, Don Davis, three-time Hall of Famer. Ray Suffo, you got the the you know Pete 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 Murray actually CEO, he worked as a mar the marketing guy for WSOF seven six years ago. You got the lo you know Jim Branson, they have such a great people that will get up and give you a hug and they really really enjoying this. You know mm. like Don Davis, this guy spent like millions of dollars to give sixty four families every season an opportunity to become a millionaire, right? And they put it on ESPN. How great is that? Like, like I said, you know, if I was a fighter, I'll, I want to sign with BFL today. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll tell you what. We'll come back. we got to take this last break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. We'll finish up the card. We'll talk a little PFL and Bellator 221. They had some cool stuff going on as well. So don't touch that dial and uh, stay close. We are the nation.
The Stanley Cup playoffs are on Sirius XM. Tonight it's Game 2 of the Western Conference Final as the St. Louis Blues take on the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks lead the series one game to none. Tune in beginning at 9 Eastern on Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio, Channel 91, and streaming on your phone and at home on Sirius XM, connected devices, and speakers. All right. We got Ali Abdelaziz here in the house. You wanted to talk a little bit about PFL. Let's do a little bit about PFL. Kayla Harrison, one of your prize pupils, she was in the main event, and she got past uh, Larissa Pacheco in the main event. Uh, in my opinion, Ali, uh, I think those 15 minutes were very valuable because she's been so good that uh, you never find out just how much you can push yourself, even though she's Olympian, I get that. But in MMA, you never know how, how much you can push yourself until you are tested. Larissa hit her. You know, she took that punch. Larissa tried to take her back. She got out of that position. Uh, so uh, were, you, were you and her happy with that, or did you just still want the demolition, you know, less than a minute like she has been doing? No, I'm, I'm happy she went to three rounds. Okay. We, you remember, if you look, we outside Sarah Kaufman, we picked up. We, we wanted Sarah Kaufman, but Ray said, no, wait. You know, we, we do this in the semifinal or the final, right? Uh I picked up the girl who was the most experienced. Larissa been in the UFC. She fought in yeah. Ultimate Fighter. Oh she yeah. have a lot of fights, right? Yeah. And she's she's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. But listen, from from beginning to end, Kayla dominated her. You know, Kayla didn't get hit once, I believe. I you think know. once. I'm talking I mean, about. Like I'm talking about getting yeah, hit, yeah, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. like it. dancing like a chicken. You know what I'm saying? Like this. Right. You know, like listen, I believe BFL has won a prize. Of the greatest woman of all the time. She's only 4-0, right? a little early, Ali. She's 4 to win. Listen, I make a lot of predictions on the shows, I right? I know. I think but 90%, remember, percent, Amanda 90 percent, done a lot. 90 percent of my predictions all right. come true, right? I understand when it comes to fighting. You guys, we all understand fighting. But I feel fighting. I dream about fighting. I, I train with her. I train with guys. When Dana White come out and said, Ronda Rousey can beat. Guys, no, no. Kayla Harrison can beat guys. I see Kayla Harrison knock guys out in the gym, right? But you're right. This three, this three round was amazing experience. She was upset about her. She beat herself up. And I said, I went to the back. I was like, what, what are you mad for? We got ring time, baby. You know, we know she's not going to gas. You know she's not going to get tired. You know, you know she's not a front runner. You know, she's an absolute beast. And that's why I said, PFL has won the lottery. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of people not running. But they can't get Kira. BFL did. Don Davis, Ray Suffolk, Pete Murray, they won the lottery. Because guess what? Because I know Kayla, at the end of the season, she's going to be a multimillionaire. And that's what it's all about. It's about making money. Mm -hmm. that's, for me, you know, a lot of guys, oh, I want to go to the years. I, I said, listen, do you want, what do you want? You want to make money or you want just media? Choose. Like I said the other day, Conor McGregor is an Instagram model, right? <laughs> Conor McGregor, he is only five for that. He's won the attention. Like, he won this. Like I said, he go to the gym. And, and uh, he did go to the gym every day. And they spray. They, they give him a spray bottle to make him look sweaty. But we know this guy doesn't really train hard. You know, because if you train hard, you, like, you can't be getting losing. You know, he haven't won a fight since 1996, right? He, he haven't won for mm -hmm. so long. See, Conor have not won a fight since 1997 or 96. He haven't won a fight in a long time. You mean 2016? Whatever. Oh, okay. It's the same shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not, I didn't know if you were talking like a... Uh, all yeah, right, I got listen, it, I got it. Listen, listen, I'm talking shit. That's, yeah. what I, that's what I do. You know, I'm a shit talk. I'm still picturing hey, the you know? spray bottle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like... Like BFL, it's, it's a great spot. You know, they, they, they treat people good, man. They treat people so good. Yeah. And I'm not saying other people don't treat good, but they are new to this. They're excited about this. They're running this. They want... You got like Pete Murray was in the NFL, right? He, he got like Don Davis. He ran billion dollar funds. You got Ray Suffer was a three time Hall of Famer. They treat people so differently. And I'm not saying other people treat people bad, but what's good about it? You make your own destiny. Yeah. How you fight. Mago Meg Karamov, uh, nice start again for him. Megamet Kamar Kamarov is the best fighter BFL have today. You know what I'm saying? The man cannot be beaten, nobody's going to beat him. You know what I'm saying? Everybody say, Rick Cooper, this Rick Cooper. Rick Cooper is a good fighter. 
It's a different, like I said, between a good fighter and great fighter. Magomed Karimov is a great fighter. He's a surgeon. The way he fight, the way he's distant. When the last time you see somebody do this to John Howard? Never. Nobody beat John Howard this way, right? Yeah, that's surprising, man. I thought I thought Howard yeah. was remember Howard John was Howard really, really focused. John right. Howard almost made it to the final of middleweight. Remember that? It was an accident and a whole bunch of stuff. Magomed Karimov is gonna beat everybody this season. Just curious, who does Magomed Karimov train with as far as like other fighters, maybe a circles? Is he expanding to bigger camps like some of the Dagestani guys? Do you know? You remember the guy hit uh, Connor was three piece yeah. and the chicken. He trained with this guy Assad. He's his coach. He trained cross trained with Khabib and all these guys, Dagestan fighters. They all train together. You know, you know he come from the mountain of Dagestan. You understand? Uh, it's, it's no playing game. But he's a nice guy, really nice guy. very smiling, very pleasant. Uh, and just he's a, he's a real champion, you know. Remember, Ray did not want to sign him. I, I I I flew him in to spar with Ray to see how good he is. And Ray sparred him. He's like, okay, I'll put him in. But they didn't believe he can win. But now they all believe he he's the best fighter there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice win by Sabadusi and Ray uh, Cooper and the cousin. They kind Saba, of Saba is, yeah, he's crazy. a beast. Yeah. Ooh, I love this. He didn't guy. even break a sweat when no. he was with Caroline Pierce. He literally was dry. Yeah. Uh, he defeated David Michelle, and, and again, Ray Cooper and the cousin look like they hugged it out. So, anyway, it's the top of the hour break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. we got Ali Abdelaziz in the house. we got a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about Rose. Got some audio there. And then also uh, talk a little bit about the roster that Ali Abdelaziz represents. It's called Dominance MMA. So, stay close. We'll be right back. Mantles are covered with participation go awards. I'm sorry. <laughs> they have boxes of gold stars that they purchase themselves. They are the legends and demand your respect. Here are George and Goes. All right. We got some breaking news here on a Monday, May 13th, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. In case you're wondering, is this a delay or is this a previous show? No, we're live right now. And we're hearing. In fact, Ali, it's your guy. You break the news. Ali Abdelaziz here, the manager of... We talk about we talk about Max Holloway, who's his front runner, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Dana Dana White gave me his word a couple of weeks ago. He said Frankie stepped up, fought Ortega, and he did not have to. The, everything he done for this company, he deserved it. I'm not taking away anything from Vanowski, you know, great fighter. But guys, I can't cuss right now because it's Ramadan, right? If anybody out there say Frankie Acker didn't deserve anything, they can you know, they can shove it right. And if you are a fighter, if you are a fighter, and you have Ariel Kawani, whatever the fuck his name is, right? Kawani, Awani, Sawani, lobbying for you. Believe me, the UFC will do whatever they can to go to opposite what he's lobbying for, right? You know, don't have this guy lobbying for you. That's he he does. Kobe Covington and Ben Askren every week. He running out of, uh, out of people, right? I see how far their career is going to go, right? You know, it's about deserving. You know, you cannot, you are a media member. What are you doing going against a legend? Like Frankie Edgar said he doesn't deserve it. Who are you? Who you think you are? You are nobody. You are bum. You garbage. You trash. That's what you are. If you ever talk about anybody out there, Talk, say 
work Edgar. I will have war with him every day. And you start, this guy started a war. He lobby, but guess what? Dana White again, one more time, the one and only, the legend, the greatest of all the time, the best promoter in combat sport, Captain his word to me. We don't agree and on Max, everything. Max Holloway's facing Frankie Edgar. We don't agree to everything, most of the time. We don't agree on a lot of things, but if he says something, he will get. And they know why delivered. Frankie Edgar fighting Max Holloway now. Wow, where's the fight? Canada, Ju July twenty-seven, whatever. He just got announced. What, what city? Brad Akamura just announced. Huh? What city? I think it's uh, Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah. Hmm. Nice, <coughs> nice for Edmonton. Now. All right. Now I I'm grateful for everything. I'm grateful for the UFC. I'm grateful. For the media who who take didn't take side, you gotta say Vanowski is great. He should wait. Frankie deserved this title shot. You understand? I didn't talk about it earlier because I let you know the UFC. That's what they do. They they break news, right? Let them break the news. Let them handle their business. But if you are a media member out there, don't ever talk about a legend. Like you told me, I said I am no in position to tell Anderson Silva not to fight because he's the one fighting. He's the one training, right? Mm -hmm. But don't ever disrespect Frankie Edgar and say does he not deserve it because I will slap you <laughs> I promise you I will slap you you know and I'm not no so gangster Ali catch us up a little bit yeah Air, you're saying that Ariel Hawani from ESPN said that he felt like Volkanovski earned the title shot he's been campaigning against Frankie a Frankie a guy who kissed his ass for the last 10 years and he but remember everybody wants a new dog they want to jump on a new wagon you understand? But you talk about loyalty and all this kind of bullshit. Loyalty is by action. You know? Say your piece. Said I think Varnowski deserve it. Don't say it over and over and over and over. And you know you're in a doghouse. You know? You know you know the UFC hate you? You know I don't really like you right now. I don't know if I'll ever like you. You know? He whatever's going on between me and him was cool. We was going to get over it. But when you start taking shit to Frankie's matter, that's what upset me. Mm. Guess what? Frankie's fighting in July for the title. You know, he deserved it. When Kevin Gaston fought for the title, he deserved it. When Marlon Marais is fighting Henry Sahoud, right? I manage both guys. We see Marlon Marais did what nobody ever did. Knocked out three top five opponents. Back to back, back to back in the first round, right? Henry Sahuro, he got big balls, right? He's taking, and, and Marlon going up, he just knocked a beat, the greatest of all the time, Demetrius Johnson. He knocked out a steroid cheater, TJ Delashaw. That's the fact. I got no, no beef with him. You understand? And now, guess what? I'm going to be home eating popcorn, watching these two young men running after a dream. You're not going to Chicago? You won't Hell be there alive? No. no. You know why? Because I'm not going to look. Somebody's going to lose. And I don't want to look in their eyes. I don't want to. Because when somebody loses, I want to be with them. I want to hold them. I want to do a lot of things to them. This is what I do, right? I, I, and it's going to be so hard for me. I'll get emotional. But they both got the money they want. But you've had guys fight each other before. And I didn't ever win. Oh, you didn't? Okay. BFL is different. It's a tournament. When you come to the UFC for titles, it's just so hard. You have to understand. I know Henry for a long time. I know Marlon for a long time. I love both guys. They both such a... Forget about all this bullshit they talking about and Henry. They both such a great guys. One of my favorite people to be around. Marlon Moraes is one of the funniest ever. Henry, you can't just not look at him and laugh. They two great men fighting for the biggest and the bigger prizes they ever have. They both have such a great contract. The UFC is taking care of them. They're making money. Guess what? I'm out. Okay. They will fight. So you, you won't be in Chicago, all right? I will not be in Chicago. Have you thought about what the last thing you're going to tell each one of them before the fight is going to be and when that like conversation will happen? Life is normal. I, like, I told Marlon, if you come to Vegas, I'm going to train with you. If Henry come here, I'm going to train with you. And nothing going to change. I'm not going to act, oh, I'm going to hold out. I don't talk. No, I talk, talk to Henry. I talk to Marlon. And, and I talk with him equally. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, you know, um, you know it's just they're such a group. They're my friends. These guys are my friends. And I know Henry says some things about Frankie and he's tried to have the fight. But I know Henry respect Frankie. 
You know, believe me, Henry, Saul, respect Frankie. And this got a little bit upset the other teams. And I talked to Henry. And Henry, guess what? Henry Saul was a great guy. Man. He's, he's such a fucking great guy. He, right now, he's the greatest combat athlete of all the time. Nobody can say he's not. Olympic gold medal, a UFC championship. Nobody have both. Marlon, one of the scariest guys out there. And guess what? They're going to fight. Believe me. Marlon is nasty. Henry is a competitor. They both going to be such a clash. And we're going to see a great fight. I think we're going to see a great fight. And guess what, man? You do not wish nothing better than two gentlemen. Two gentlemen. They are gentlemen. They're such a great guys. You know them. They treat people with respect. And guess what? I'm so happy they got there so far. Simple. All right. Well, we're on a roll here with your roster, so let's keep talking about your roster. Kamaru Usman had a surgery, and now that we're breaking fights and kind of figuring things out a little bit, a lot of the champions, hey, credit to the champions, right? They're, they're, looks like they're staying busy. So let's talk about two of them. Kamaru Usman is slated to fight Colby Covington. Uh, at least according to Dana White, he says that's his, that's his title shot. Uh, when do you think this fight might happen now that cards are starting to fill out and things like it's that? It's going to happen when Osman wa- ready to ha- make it happen. Yeah. If Cody want it, no problem. He can get it. He can sit and relax. You know, remember, he, he can say whatever he wants. I got email and text messages. He turned his fight four or five times to be clear. You understand? His manager is my friend, Dan Lambert. Dan Lambert, no. I know. I respect Dan Lambert a lot. Kobe turned down the fight? Of course. He turned his... The title fight? No. Oh, before you mean previous? That. Okay. Is a reason why Osman got the title over him because Dana offered Kobe to fight Osman for an interim belt to save the, the fight in, in Anaheim. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but listen, Kobe in the destruction business, <laughs> he dig the hole, he cannot fill. He dig the will, he's going to drown in, and it's all right. He let him all talk, let him promote. When do you think Kamara will be ready to fight? When Kamara is ready, we'll let everybody know. 2019? He's, he's the king. He's, he's an African king. He's the king of the jungle right now. The he, had, he had the a very impressive uh, win against Tyron Woodley. Wait to see what he's going to do to Kobe. You think this is impressive? Well, when he beat Tyron Woodley, you didn't think that was impressive? I thought that was no, very impressive. I think it's going to be so much more impressive when you're going to beat Kobe. It's going to be so much more impressive because stylistically, it's the worst matchup for Kobe, and he's smart. He avoided him for a long time. Do you think, do you, do you know what Osman is going to do to him? <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait. But it's all good. Listen. Finish? Huh? Finish? Suffer. Wow. Drink his own blood. Swallow his own tongue. Dig his own grave. That's what's going to happen. A lot of things said, but Os- what's, on, what, what's so cool about Osman, though? He take it all in and smile, right? And he whip your ass over and over and over and over. Fight week. Okay, how about this? Do you think that if the fight happens, it will be in the United States or outside the United States? Doesn't matter. It can be right here, right now. Same result will happen. Same people will tune in. Same people will watch. It doesn't matter where it's going to happen. Well, I'm just trying to piece it together because I know Abu Dhabi's in September. Australia's in October. Uh, so I'm trying to get a beat on when this fight could happen. You got me excited about the fight. Now I want to see it. But it's gonna ha- Listen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You just got to sit down. All right. How about let's, let's, let's shift gears. Habib Nurmagomedov against Dustin Poirier. Uh, D- Dustin is number one contender. Abu Dhabi? L- listen. September? That's, that's the plan. But, you know, certain things need to happen. Abdul Manab Nurmagomedov is his father. The boss of all bosses. Great. Little business. Money, right? No, I meant, I meant to say, like, money issues or... Because this will lead into another question. One thing, one thing you're going to learn about me, right? Yeah. I get your fighter to have an eagle. And it's going to be an eagle clapping, right? I don't talk about business. I'm going to announce that the fight. Right. Kevin Gaston just fought for... I'm telling you this now. Mm-hmm. It's the worst matchup for Max. Okay. He well, can't make Frankie tired. All this Volkan- dog- Volkanovski's not going to be happy to hear that then if there's going to be a rematch it's a, too. It's all right. <laughs> all it's right. A- so let me ask you this. and let me, ask, let me start over and just ask you without saying specifically about Habib or Kamaru. Because, again, you manage a lot of big-name fighters. You have these meetings with Dana White. I serve and A lot him. of us media and fans are curious. Now under the new ESPN way of business where the pay-per-view buys apparently they, they don't matter to the UFC because they already have a, 
a set fee of what they get paid. Go and negotiate the fee. Is that how it is? First of all, on the planet. Okay. Okay. For you to fight on ESPN, it's already you know you made it. You go home, mama. I made it, mama. You understand? And whatever pay-per-view point, we, uh, we eat a lot of things. A lot of people say a lot of things and say a lot of reports. You're going to see uh, Marlon, both of them defending, regardless. Because, you know, win or lose, Henry, you're going to have two belts or one belt. It doesn't matter. You understand? You know, we're going to have four belts. We already have four belts, right, instead of a draw. But Do you think you'll enjoy the process of negotiating more now that there really isn't pay-per-views to go after but basically a set price negotiation is an art it's a control of other people's ego is about being humble is about pushing the right button on the right times is about respecting other people's opinion this is what's a real negotiation is negotiation is not holding out on each other going through social media and talk about it this is why i said i'm not saying i am the best manager in the game i'm not saying anything like that i will never say that but I believe I changed the game. Your fighters say it. I changed the game. Your fighters give you a lot of props. I'll give you that. Okay, it's an art. Uh, have you mastered the art? Or are you still working on it? I'm, if, I'm, if it was a belt system, what belt would you be in this art? I'm a white belt. I wake up That's every it? morning. I'm a, I'm a wake, I wake up every day. I think I'm a white belt. Because if you're a white belt, you're going to stay hungry and you want to learn. If you think you're a black belt, <laughs> you Is Dana White a black belt huh? in negotiating? <laughs> They know it's a red belt. <laughs> 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 they know it's a red belt. Because you have, you have to understand, you deal with a guy got so much money and he's negotiating so many things, he can hold out. And I can hold out. But I don't let it get this way. I, I never let it go this way. I said, hey, can I come over? Or, you know, I, I, work, I do a lot of deals with hunters too. You know, he's a, Hunter Cam is a great guy. And you know what? I do a deal with Mick, with Sean. I don't, oh, I only talk with Dana White. No. He's the last guy I want to talk to, to be honest with you. <laughs> when I go to go in his office, I try to talk anything about outside fighting. Because he's not... Why is that, by the way? Isn't it basically... Um, no. It should be a pleasant experience in the sense of, if this, w if this is what the money's being made, and my fighter's worth this, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I would think that by I, now I, it should I, be pretty easier, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's easy. It's easy, but it's sensitive. It's sensitive. Listen. Marlon getting paid very well for his fight, right? Henry's getting paid. Henry's getting paid as a heavyweight right now. That's what Henry's For the made. Chicago fight? Both yes, of them? yes. Okay. He's getting paid some serious cash, right? He is. He would tell you. He's making a lot of money. I got no complaint right now, you know? I got a couple of other deals I'm making. But the whole thing is, you always see my guy sitting out. See, Ned Diaz sat out for three years. He ruined three days of his life. You know, why would you do that, you know? He can hold out. His, now he's fighting Anthony Pettis. Anthony Pettis, right? UFC 241. Yeah, yeah good folks, fight. That, that was good uh, fight. broken on the, it, it was worth on the broadcast. It. Anaheim, it, was, California. It, it was worth it waiting on for three years. People love Nate Diaz. People want to see Nate Diaz fight. The people missed Nate Diaz, right? But you're going to fight a guy, younger guy, who's been active. A lot of factors is going to factor in. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Nate is going to lose, but it's a close fight. You think Nate made a mistake sitting out too long, waiting for Connor trilogy? Yeah. So do I. 100%. Yeah. Nate, Nate, like, you know, listen. He I'm looked really good when he beat Michael Johnson. Mm -hmm. Never looked better. And he got the Nate fight, but I really felt like, you know. Uh, at one point, he wanted he, to fight Habib, right? Nate? Well, yeah, but that was at the plan in Hollywood. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, look, there's certain matchups that aren't good for Nate. I've seen him lose to Clay Guida. I've seen him lose to RDA. But there's other matchups where he's done pretty good. You know what I mean? So depending on who was champ. Remember, Eddie Alvarez was champ at one point. I think Nate would have had an interesting fight against Eddie Alvarez. Uh, Conor McGregor was champ at one point. Nate has already beaten Conor McGregor. So I think Nate would have had some opportunities. But he chose to set out, set out for the trilogy. I, Frankly, we don't know what these guys make. Maybe they made so much that he could do this. But I still felt like when you're the champ, you can make a ton of money. You should always strive to be the champ. Who you guys should, you think should get your fight? Just in case. Let's talk about that. So Ferguson has Cerrone. Yeah. Habib has Poirier. You can confirm that, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's left, guys? Well, Cowboys. stop Stop right there. Because no, Cowboys got Ferguson, right? We were, that's what oh, we were right. saying. Al just, was, Al just lost. Al just lost. So, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, I thought that that should have been the fight. What? Ferguson and, and uh, Gaethje. That would have been a great fight, too. And then try and make that Cowboy-Connor fight. So what's left is 
Connor and Gagey? Is that what's is that what you're pointing at? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to get a hang of this. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> who, who cares? Like to be honest, people people want to chase this guy Connor McGregor. Guess what? If you want to come and get it, we understand. If you give Gaethje eight weeks, Gaethje, Gaethje doesn't take short notice fight. Just to be clear, for everybody yeah. to know out there, Gaethje need eight weeks. If you give Gaethje eight weeks and ask him to fight you or for anybody, he's gonna fight. He's not gonna turn down any fights, right? But do you really think Conor McGregor want to go to this darker place and just think Gaethje take you? Do you believe so? People think yes. Well, to be fair, he fought Habib. It doesn't get any darker than that, right? But he fought Khabib for a title. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He chasing the title, right? Justin Gaethje, he's the... I've been kicked by a lot of guys, right? When he kick you, he, your kick touch your heart, your intestine, your butthole. You understand? Everything hurts. I sparred with these guys many rounds, right? And I have to fight him. I try to kill him. You understand? But... He he take you to inspiring in dark places. And I know what kind of mentality. You can't teach heart. You born with heart. Conor McGregor, maybe he's a good street fighter. Maybe he have heart in street fights, right? Because the police always can come and break it up. Or the people come and break it up, right? And everything is on camera. But I think he have a breaking point. Geshe doesn't have. Khabib doesn't have. a lot. Ferguson doesn't have. You know, Connor does have. He will have a breaking point. And Justin will break. We'll take him to this breaking point. Connor, Justin may get knocked out in the process. Don't, don't take this away from Connor because he always got this left hand, right? But I believe it. If, that if Justin happens. Gaethje will fight Connor McGregor, it's like a slaughter and a pig. And, make it, and he's going to squeal. And he's going to be all red and blue on Monday night. His legs will be. Like a rainbow color. You understand? Like Sergio his Moraes? Face, Did you guys see his legs? His, yeah, nah. Bad. His face will be like a watermelon, black and red. You understand? You know, we'll give this, we'll give this white boy some color. You understand? We'll give him a, we'll give him a bloody tan. Just in case you will eat his heart alive. Wouldn't they make... Okay, uh, process of elimination. These are the two best 55ers out there that aren't signed. Wouldn't it make sense to have them on the same card as Poye and Habib? No, nah, of course it doesn't make sense because they both can sell pay-per-view. Why you want to put them but all But pay-per-view sales don't matter anymore, do they? Of course it does. What are you talking about? Are you serious? They do? Of course it does. Well, yeah, of course. As much as the fighter, though? wants to get sign-ups. I get that. This is why you have to kind of maneuver the deals. A pay-per-view still exists. If anybody said that pay-per-view doesn't exist. Pay-per-view points still exist? Hell yeah, it exists. Okay. If, if the UFC tried to give me a deal no pay-per-view tonight, I'm going to be throwing the shit and be like, get the hell out of here. Right? I'm going to be like, no. Especially if Khabib or Connor or some of these guys, the marquee names, they can say pay-per-view. I'll get more guarantee, though. You know? But I'll get some pay-per-view, too. But the pay-per-view business is, is big. Yeah. If, you, if you out there don't want a pay-per-view point, you're crazy. If you can sell pay-per-view. Huh? Maybe the pay-per-view for Henry doesn't make sense. But maybe it makes for Connor and Khabib sense. You know what I'm saying? It depends on the fighter. You know? And believe me. Where, where would you want that fight to take place? Gagey versus Connor. Where does it make the most sense? doesn't matter. <laughs> that means he knows. I, no, I don't. No. I, I, re- I Truly. I've never been offered this fight. Mm-hmm. i never been asked about this fight. But I said, if this, if this, if this, if this Irish rubber can want to get it, Justin Gagey will give it to him. I want to see it in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, really? I love it when, I love it when there's... I don't think they do that. Hey, though. It's not going to happen. Out there, though. First of all, well, hold Con- on a second. To be fair, Connor is not going to be the co-main event. If pay-per-views be. still matter, wouldn't Habib want Connor on his card? No. To help sell the no. pay-per-views? No. Because Habib would try to kill him. Bro, you have to understand. Connor is not safe. He's, I'm, being on, I'm being very honest with you. Okay. He's not safe. All right. He's not safe. He's not. Like, people think it's not over. Like, Connor is right. He Sydney, said, Australia? The stadium show? No. no. How, how are we going to take Connor McGregor Sydney, Australia? Normally, he sells 20, th- $20 million gate. You know, so how it's got to be th- Vegas or New York? It's, it's got to be somewhere here or New Canada York. or somewhere. New York. Oh, Canada. Think, you know Is that a clue? Edmonton? Uh, 
nobody. No, he's knows. not gonna go to Edmonton. Nope. No. No, you never know. You never know. Canada's still a paper. You know, it's, it's, it's still North America. You know. Yeah. But forget about the Conor McGregor. Just we'll move on. All right. <laughs> There's lots of fighters to discuss. So let's do. That. Let's take a break though. Get this out of the way. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156. We have Ali Abdelaziz in the house.
Both iPhone and Android carry a feature to make their show more enjoyable. It's called the mute button. Here are those two numb nuts, gorgeous George and Goes. NBA Radio has your chance to win a trip for Game 4 of the NBA Finals. For official rules and, de- and details, go to SiriusXM.com slash NBA Finals 2019 and do that before May 20th. No additional purchase is necessary. Void where prohibited. Must be a U.S. resident and at least 18 years of age to win. Two quick things. Congrats to Manchester City for winning the English Premier League. We now have two months of waiting until the preseason starts again, so you won't have to hear from our pie holes regarding (laughs) the most popular game in the world, soccer. Also, Kawhi Leonard, shout out to you. Former Mountain Wester out of San Diego State hit an incredible shot to send the Toronto Raptors to uh, the semifinals over the Philadelphia 76ers. What a heartbreaker, man. Mm -hmm. It's hard to win on the road. And the 76ers competed, and then Kawhi Leonard just hit almost an impossible shot. I've watched that replay a hundred times, looking at different people in the, in the crowd, yeah. their reactions. That's awesome. It's crazy, man. It was like three bounces before it finally sunk through. All right, Ali Abdelaziz is our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. And What about, what about how breaking news on MMA Junkie Frankie Radio? Edgar Frankie Edgar, Edgar versus Max Holloway. Versus Max Holloway Let's in talk. Edmonton on July 27th. That is set. It's UFC 240. And actually, you guys got the breaking news, but you got the breaking news off air. You actually actually got <laughs> yeah. it. You guys actually got it. You actually broke the news. Realistically, you did. What? That's what you were talking about? Yeah. That Holloway and Edgar? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know. But that was the call you took, right? Yeah. Or that was the call I took. else in the that chamber. Was the co- and then okay. I was talking shit. He said, <laughs> MMA junkie must have been hurting for guests. But, you know, listen. Honestly, it's flattering. You know, he's even, you know, talking about us. It's, it's, it's all good. All right, so let's continue on here with your roster. Give us an update on Ray Borg. Is he serious that if he misses weight again, he'll quit the sport? He's not missing weight again, man. This boy right now is in shape, man. Yeah. He's, 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 you have to understand, what happened, people doesn't know this. He slipped. He didn't throw money punches when he fought. He slipped. He twisted his wrist. His wrist was swollen like this. And we have to hide it from the commission. He, he slipped on his kind of weight. He was mm-hmm. not had this much weight. He couldn't even, he was hurt, and he fell on his head, you know, he was hurting, man. People didn't know, but he's like, I'm fighting, I'm not pulling out. I said, okay. He's got a few more years left in him. He's young, he's, he's 20, 26, 20, right? Bro, he's a baby. 27? He's a baby. I like Ray Borg, man. He's, he's been great. through a lot, I understand that. But uh, I hope, I, yeah, I guess fighters get emotional and they say things. But I thought he gave Demetrius, believe it or not, I know people might laugh at this because Demetrius is so dominant, but he didn't stop coming at Demetrius. He lost the fight. But whereas, he went Demetrius, on his shield. whereas Demetrius has put away a lot of other fighters, I mean, Ray Borg kept fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And, fighting. and I had a feeling that uh, if he kept at it, he may be a world champion one day. We'll yeah. see. He's, he's a kid, man. Yeah. All right. Next up, Cody Garbrandt. When do you think we'll see him fight again? Um, he lost to Pedro Munoz, and then he's also has a couple losses to TJ Dillashaw. But I know he's been – I know it's been a sensitive subject for you guys. After what came out of, you know, from USADA about T.J. Dillashaw. Uh, clarify this for me, though. Tell me if you know. Didn't Jeff Nowitzki clear T.J. Dillashaw of using EPO in it on at least the last Cody fight? Is that true? Do you know about both Cody fights or one? Or what's your stance on that? This is the deal. If you're an Olympic gold medalist and you get caught with steroids, right? They take all your medals away. Every medal you ever won, you ever received, right? Mm-hmm. T.J. Dillashaw, all his wins in the UFC should be taken away. We told Usada about this for the last three years. They ignored it. I like Jeff Nowitzki, but Jeff Nowitzki doesn't work for Usada. He worked for the UFC, right? People get a twist. He's a great guy, right? You know, when you talk about Cody Garbrandt, I get goosebumps. I love this boy. I love everything about him. He's a great human being. He's so kind. I will give my last meal to him. That's how much I love this boy. But he's young too. He's 27 years old. He has a lot of fight left in him. The key, you just got to get him healthy, get him right. The UFC want him to fight in Sacramento. I said, no. I want him to fight in October, November. Let's get him right. I agree. And I'm behind Cody Garbrandt to the end. When you say I steal Cody Garbrandt, steal can become a world champion. And I know I know a lot of guys in this weight division. But I steal, he can become a world champion. If he get healthy and get his mind clear. Listen, 
He went on his shield. You know what's Cody's problem? He's too much of a fighter. If Cody Garbrandt fought the way Dominic Cruz fight, it's going to be very hard to beat. The way, the way he beat Dominic. But he got so much on his shoulder. Just chip on his shoulder. If you punch him, he want to kill you. You understand? He want to eat your heart out. But that's just Cody. Love him or hate him. Cody Garbrandt, one of the most requested guys for appearances and sponsorship today. Outside Khabib, him and Khabib, right? People love him. You know? And he just... So he does well outside the cage? I fuck it. He does very well outside the cage. Nice. Yeah. Ali, when you say get him right, do you mean physically, mentally, or both? Both. You gotta, both. When you come for this kind of loss, you need to clear your head. You got to make sure your brain is brain stable when you get wronged like that. <laughs> you know, listen, Pedro Ramos, Pedro Munoz, uh, don't take out nothing from him as a great fighter. You know, if he probably win, he might get a title shot. You know, if Aljamain win, probably he's not going to get a title shot. You know what I'm saying? If Aljamain win and Marlon win, you can't give Aljamain as a rematch. You know, probably you're going to have to give somebody like Peter Jan if he win. But if Pedro Munoz win, you can't deny him. Okay. You know, I'm gonna keep going if down. Ma if if you know, if Marlon win, Henry win, it's a completely different story. You know. I want to keep going down your roster here. It's, it'll be one year now that Fabricio Verdun's been suspended. He has one more year to go on a suspension. Where does he stand? Is he just gonna ride out the year and come back to the UFC, or does he still yes. prefer? Yes, he's he's out of Osada right now. Program. He's gonna be in the Osada program probably by next week. It's a good, you know. Fabricio Astil is gonna come back and be top five heavyweight in the world. It's fine. He's He's training. He's doing everything right. But, you know, he was a little bit sour about those sort of things. Because right. I believe he did not cheat at all. Um, but, you know, the system got us. But it's okay. He's going to be on Osada. I think he have one more year. And he'll be back in the cage, yes. Mm -hmm. You have some fighters going this weekend. Sajara Eubanks, Vicente Luque. I, pending, I guess, maybe somebody being. You think somebody's going to replace Magni, or you think Luke is just off the card? No, somebody will replace Magni. Okay. For sure. Sean so Shelby. Hey, you have two fighters going Sean Shelby is the greatest matchmaker of all the time. Sean Shelby will fight somebody. This man, you know what's so crazy about Sean Shelby? What's that? He know guys 1-0 and 2-0. And, and I was like, how you know these guys? And I was like, you know, he's, he's I guess he's a nerd, a fight nerd or something. Because I, I know, he said, I used to scout you when you was 1-0. and o, And he told me exactly how I fought. And I was like, what? He said, him and Lorenzo Vadita have a talk about me. And I was like, wow. And he told me exactly how I fought, how I won, how I lost, how everything. It's crazy. Sean Shelby is a walking Wikipedia of knowledge. Mm -hmm. this, this man, <laughs> he's one of the pillars of the UFC today. I believe he is. He would even go to the amateur fights, remember? Yeah, Watch I saw those. him a lot at Tough Enough. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Zabit Magomed Sharapov. Uh, I asked you something off the air. You, you can ask me. Okay. Rumors are he's going to fight Brian Ortega. Why not? <laughs> 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 Why not? Uh, can you confirm that? Or uh, is, is that the a fight strong rumor or, or is it it's a factor? It, no, it's nothing official. Okay. But, but they should fight. You know, That's Brian a great fight, man. Brian Ortega is a great fighter. Zabit is a great fighter. And, you know, if you want to be the best, you got to be the best. And Brian Ortega is one of the best. And if they beat one, he got to go after Brian Ortega. And if Brian Ortega can be like, you know what? The, I'm going to derail this hype. And, you know, I got nothing but respect for Brian Ortega. So when I hear a rumor like that, tell me, is it the same with you? Like the fight's already been pitched? Has a bout agreement been sent? Has a crowd agreement been signed? Like tell me where I stand here on the rumor that I heard. Uh, or me personally, yeah. I will never. If the UFC called me, said, hey, this fight is done. And they, they, they still meet it down, and the other guy's done. It's good to go. Sometimes they said, please don't release it. Right. And I will stick to my word. If they don't say release it and you call me, I'll, I'll say something. Is your side interested in this fight? We are very interested in this okay. fight, yes. Um, would, would Brian need a passport to uh, attend this fight, to fight in this? I'm sure he has a passport. He, yeah. <laughs> so he should bring his passport for this fight, or...? Hey, listen, it can happen in <laughs> Russia, California. Like, well, you want to ask me if it happened in Russia? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it happened in California. I don't know. I don't know if Brian Ortega want to go to Russia. 
You know, maybe he'd want to be awesome, Rosh. man, wouldn't it? I yeah. mean, it would, but after after the last one, I don't know. But I'd Rose, keep was, it state we, side. Rose was fighting good though before the slam. Listen, yeah, Brian, hey, Brian, and Ortega. Ryan Span knocked out Noguera, and uh, the Argentinian who lives in Brazil, I guess. Never mind that. Br- one, Br- hey, Br- Brian is a gangster. He he's not he's not afraid of nobody. Neiman Gracie. Oh, that fight. Uh, oh, you got me. You just got yeah, me. Quarter. I almost drink quarter, but I can't. It's Ramadan. Rory <laughs> McDonald. <laughs> June twenty, June fifteenth. Let me pull that up. Sorry, uh, but but those guys are fighting for sure. McDonald, change of change of heart. Um, I should say ching of heart. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to lose out on a million dollars. He's fighting Neiman Gracie. Look, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When the first time I saw Neiman Gracie fight, it was after an interview that we had, and he said, "I'm a different fighter. I'm one of the Gracies that's evolved, and I got striking." But when I saw him fight, I, I wasn't impressed with his striking. That was like his fourth fight. Okay. He really has improved a lot. Um, and, man, he's got a swag to him and some confidence. I didn't think he was going to beat Ed Ruth. Yeah. He beat Ed Ruth. So, who knows, man. I, I mean, any time a Gracie's doing well, the promotion's got to be excited. Oh, yeah. You tell me, what's this kid's potential? And uh, what do you think about the fight versus Rory McDonald? Rory's one of the best welter or well, yeah, welterweights ever. I think Rory is one of the welter best. Lo- he beat Tyron Woodley. He beat Lex. Mm-hmm. Who he beat? Look, look, look him up. Lima. He, beat, he, yeah. beat, he beat so many guys, right? Maya. Yep. Uh, Lawler? Yeah. Yep. Lawler. He beat Lawler. Uh, no, no, no. No, no he lost Lawler. Lawler. No, he lost Lawler. Safadine. That's all I'm going to tell Con. you this. Oh, no, I'm lost Con. I'm going to tell you this. Okay. Name and Gracie might be the sec- one of the best Gracies we've ever seen. You know what? Yeah. He's a 4.0 Gracies. He's not just going to pull guard and try to submit you. He's going to take you down. He's going to strike with you. He's going to kick you. Listen. I got nothing but Rory respect for Rory McDonald. But Rory McDonald time has gone. It's done. It's past. Now it's, the, it's name and time. It's a Gracie time right now. He, 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 you don't see this Gracie anymore. Like they're going to come and pull guard. No, it's a different era. You have to understand. First time I met Naaman, right? He, Naaman cannot do 10 pull-ups. This is fact. And everybody used to pick on him in the gym so bad. But I took Naaman under my wings. And he used, to, he used to live in the same building. I, and me and him, we used to come every night, go to my house, and he used to eat all my fruit and ice creams. And my wife was like, where's the ice cream? I said, Naaman, Naaman was soft at the time, but Naaman, he, has, he, he got picked up so bad. And he kept training and training and training and training. And I said, listen, he got Gregor Gracie, a fucking phenom. Igor Gracie, a great athlete. Naaman was everything you see, he worked hard for. He's not fast, he's not the strongest. But everything and you see Naaman now, he works so hard and he has to continue to work hard to maintain this quality, right? But I'm going to tell you something. It's going to take a hell of a man to beat Naaman Gracie on June 14 in Bellator. It's going to be, uh, uh, you know, you know, Rory questioning himself. And I don't like that as a fan because I respect him. Mm-hmm. But we are fighting the world champion. One of the greatest world to, all the time. We're not fighting the broken world. I keep Rory. forgetting that. That's right. The, the belt is on the line. Yeah. We're, not, yeah. we're, not, we're, not, yeah. we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. we not fighting the broken Rory McDonald's. We're not buying that. But believe me. Mark my word again. This is the prediction. Name and Gracie you're gonna finish Rory McDonald's June 14. Wow. Getting the wind is b- is bold is ballsy, right? But a finish too. He's gonna finish him. When's yeah. Ramadan over? Ramadan will be over by Name then. Name and right? Gracie doesn't do Ramadan. No, no, I know, I He's know that. But when is uh, June fifth? June fifth. So yeah. the fight will happen after. I'm gonna bet you In and Out Burger. I take McDonald's. I, I can't. I don't eat burgers. I, I'll bet the chicken. Well, I'll buy I'm you whatever Gracie you want. Well. <laughs> I'll bet. I don't. I don't bet, but I'll buy you a dinner regardless. A burger. All right. I'll buy you a dinner. I I, I, I got to see it to believe it. Um, he beat Ed Ruth, and that was very impressive. No, no, but he McDonald's. Did, he did not beat Ed Ruth. Stop. He Ed. whooped Red Ruth's ass. That was impressive. No, he whooped his ass. I know. Let's I was be real. Impressed. He's a great I was impressed. He was I, the I top tone underdog. To. I didn't think he Rory McDonald. Yeah. Naaman Gracie. But McDonald's is, tough, though. Man. He's very tough. All right. But well, I if know. I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, listen. I, I, I train with Naaman and I train with John. I know how good. I train with a lot of these guys. I never train with Rory, right? Believe me. Naaman Gracie is gonna finish Rory McDonald. All right. You're saying I'm you're, taking you're Gracie, like Gracie as well. As well? Yeah, okay. yeah. Who are you taking? I think I'm going with McDonald, man. You got how? Decision. All right, goes me and you, Burger. I think he's time. gonna. Say, I think he's gonna keep. You don't think Neymar gonna? Ground, if ground you, let, let me. Let me. Tom you think he's gonna. Ground, 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 yeah. 
Ground and pound. Man. Five guys. I don't know about that. All right. Let me tell you something. Okay. Ed Roos is a three-time master champion, one of the greatest wrestlers we'll ever see in this MMA sport. How many times did Emma Grace take him down? I don't know how many. Five. Okay. Right? And he finished him, right? Okay. Neyman Gracie got the best guard in MMA. A hand down. It's not even close. Nobody. It's not Jack Array, It's not Damian Maya. Neyman Gracie got the best guard in MMA. I see him tap many UFC champions come to the hands of Gracie Gym. I saw it. Okay. Okay? If he take all he need one take down was Rory. And it's over. All right. We'll <laughs> see. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156. Stay close. We'll be right back. We have Ali Abdelaziz in the house. All jokes aside, George and Ghost are some of the best chicks I know. Eh, here we go with more verbal sparring. Take it away, ladies. All right, Ali, let's talk about Corey Anderson. He's also on your stable. He's got three wins in a row, fighting in the UFC's light heavyweight division. I know he really wanted the John Jones fight, but they gave it to Thiago Santos. Uh, what does he feel like? Where does he feel like he stands now? Corey is going to be bold, right? If any gonna, if anybody gonna give John Jones a fight right now, it's Corey. I think pressure, wrestling, smart, 
You know, it's not like John Jones is the hardest hitting guy in the sport, you know. I'm just, mm. Corey will be in his face. Up against the cage? Is that where that fight takes place? No, it would, it would take through in the middle. I, I don't think John Jones can take Corey down. When the last time you see somebody take Corey down? <laughs> and the out wrestling he did against, I know Patrick Cummins has, has lost a lot of fights, oh, but as far as wrestling, point. the how yeah. he beat him was super impressive. Like people, yeah. oh Patrick, no, that was a really impressive win for Eleven Corey. Eleven takedowns, right? That guy, yeah. Eleven takedowns. Pat Cummins had the record for takedowns before that fight, and Corey set it on Pat. Yeah, it was crazy. Is he going to take a fight in between, or is he going to wait for the winner? We listen. At the end of the day, I think Dominic Reyes is the fight need to happen. Oh okay, yeah, and I That'd think good that's good. He, yeah, listen. Yes. Dominic Reyes is a great fighter. He's doing good things, but for him to, you know, him and Corey got to fight and see who's the best man can get the title shot. You know, that's the fight to make, it's to be great, honest with great you. Great test, wow. Um, yeah. You know, but listen, like I said, Corey's all hard work too. <laughs> this guy, they call him 24-8 for a reason. The guy, they, they kick him out of the gym. They turn light off on him. He cannot leave. I'm telling you, Corey, before end his career, he will have a belt. I know a lot of people say I'm stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. But you, to, you told me that about Henry Cejudo. You said it about a lot of guys, right? But people become, you said about Osman. Co Corey Anderson will become a UFC champion before the end of his career. We got a call coming in from Canada, the Great White North. It's Oreo in uh, Alberta, Canada. What's up, Oreo? Yeah. What's up, bud? Hello? Hello? Yep, how you doing? Hey, man. Hey, uh Good, man. I'm so glad uh, about that breaking news because I actually live in Edmonton, so I'm excited for that fight. Ah, that you that live fight. in Edmonton? Nice. nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be definitely going there. I just had a question for Ali. What's up, brother? How you doing? Uh, what's up, man? Uh, honestly, you have been my favorite manager ever since you beat up Nakikawa, so... Uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> I never I said I beat up nobody. I, ne I never said I did nothing to nobody. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are you talking about, my man? <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Frankie Edgar. Best Malky's my friend. Too, and uh, let's <laughs> I'm just wondering, man, since uh, you have so many fighters and uh, so many contenders, uh, at least you have at least two fighters on your roster and the top ten of the UFC. And you're already having it with Teddy Cejudo and uh, Marlon Marais. But what do you do when, you know, you have a top contender fighting one of your guys? Because these, these are UFC champions, their dream, right? So how do you know, how do you negotiate that fight? And knowing that your two friends, they're like your children, how do you know they're going to battle to take each other's dream? How do you feel about that? Like I said, when, we born up here, when you're born, right, you grow up, you have a sure. dream. You have a dream. And these two young men have a dream. They both want to become a UFC champion. Marlon take a pay cut to come to the UFC. He, he, he wants to become a UFC champion. Henry signed for almost z not a lot of money to be in the UFC. And he didn't have to be, become a UFC fighter, right? But they both have a dream and they have a goal. And they're here today, June 8th. They'll go on there and they'll compete against each other. My job is to put them on the right path to fight for UFC title. And I did my job. But they did it by beating all these great opponents they beat. And I just, my job is finished. June 8th, they'll fight. The best man might win. And I'll be watching. And I hope both of them, after the fight, will shake hands and hug it out and uh, give each other respect. And the best man might win on this night. All right, thanks for the call from Oreo. Uh, Ali, what about Kelvin Gastelum? How is he doing? Is he in good spirits? When do you anticipate he will fight again? It's crazy. Mick Maynard, the UFC matchmaker, just texted me. He said, when is Kelvin Gastelum going to fight next? Mm. I don't know. Mick, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm he, not sure. Is he healthy? Um, you know, he, he, he got a problem with his eyes a little bit, his orbital, but it's getting better. But I'm not sure when he want to fight. You know, it's a brutal fight. It, it was a, it was a really rough fight, right. and he needs some time off. I want him to get some time off. Um, is what is what what is his spirit like? Like uh, I know oh. I know he's demoralized, but no, he's not demoralized. No? Okay, he he. I think so he's ready to. He's ready to sign a little fire under his ass. Mm. Yeah, he fought I, really I, I well, man. Hey, man, I like Israel a lot. Mm -hmm. I really do. But next time this guy's boy is gonna fight. 
I think it's going to be violent. It's going to be very violent. Mm -hmm. Because they respect each other, but I think it's so personal in a good way. And I think that I believe Israel is going to be Robert Whittaker. I really do. And I believe Calvin need to get a win. And I think they'll fight again. Makashev, he's like 7-1 and one in the UFC now, right? Uh, you're talking about the future UFC champ, Islam Makhachev, right? Yeah, well, uh, he, I know he's been looking good. He's Islam ranked Makhachev. in the USA Today Sports MMA Junkie rankings. Yeah, because he deserves to be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Islam is a, you know, I believe maybe he's the most complete fighter coming out of Dagestan. And it's very hard to say because he got Zabit, he got Khabib. But my opinion, I train with all of them, right? Uh -huh. Islam is the most complete fighter we ever see come from Dagestan. Complete. Um, Jake Shields got a win at the Submission Underground? That's my yeah. guy, man. You know, Jake Shields, you know, he took a back step is, to MMA. Is, is he done with MMA? Is I, I don't know. I hope so. And I told him. But, you know, who I am to tell a legend not to fight anymore. But I kind of told him not to fight. But he's having fun. Jake, Jake is such an amazing guy, man. And it's such a pleasure to be around. Lance Palmer is no longer training at Extreme Couture now. He's tr no, he, listen, he still have this great relationship with Eric. Eric Nixick is my friend, very good coach. Right. So proud of him, grown as a coach. Really, really proud of this guy. Yeah. But, you know, he have Jeremy Kennedy there. He got Alexander Almeida there. You know, and he's in the same gym. As, and he, I guess for this camp, he chose to go train with uh, Frankie Edgar and these guys. But they're still friends. They still have good relationship. I'm not going to say he left Extreme Couture. He just different, went to a different route. For the season, okay. Yeah. Okay, I got it. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and oh, updating us on your roster. Congrats mm -hmm. on all your success. Thank you, sir. You have a lot of beasts out there doing their thing, and on June 8th, you'll have yet another UFC world champion. That is very, very impressive, man. It's uh, uh, there's like some great managers in this sport, and there's a lot of them that carry multiple champions as well. Like you mentioned, you know, Butler, Kawa's name's come up. Adi Atar's had multiple champions as well. But uh, seriously, man, you're on a roll right now. It's just, man, like I'm grateful for everything this guy's allowed me. Like I said, I have so many masters, and I'm a servant for all of them. You know, you're never going to see me. I said, I'm the best managers. I'm the best. I'm the best. I never think that. I always say there's room for improvement. I can get better. I can communicate better. I have start, stopped getting three fights with people. You know, I have to, you know, to grow up a little bit. I know I have a lot of growing up to me. But I, I carry my emotion on my shoulder. Hurt me a little bit. But I'm just glad, uh, actually, to be around this. It's just, I'm so lucky, you know. I never thought I'll be here today, but I'm here. Right on. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks to Ali Abdelaziz for his time. You can follow him on Twitter at Ali Abdelaziz double zero. Same goes for Instagram. Tomorrow we'll be joined by Joanna Yonjacek. She will be on our show. Dave Manley from MMA Bobblehead. He will be a co-host of ours. Uh, also joining us on the show will be uh, one of the one of the featherweights from Ali's roster fighting in the PFL. So it should be a fun show, and we'll be. Back at 8 Eastern with another edition. Go out there and be a champion.